Today we'll be part 98 in the series Scriptures Often Ignored, and today we're going to be talking more about the cross, stake, and tree and getting more clarification about this because so many people have reached out to me wondering about this topic, and now we're going to get clarity about this. And because this is a truth network, we use the restored name for the Father Yahua, read from right to left in the Yahudith ancient Paleo Hebrew, also Yahusha for the Son, and Ruch Akadush commonly known as the made apart spirit and also alua for the restored title referring to the father son and the ruk akadush now before we get started with the actual video i just wanted to also bring this up regarding emails if you have emailed me with questions or if you've emailed me within the past couple of months i just ask that you please give me time to respond to your email once again please give me time it's more than likely going to take a few months due to all of the emails that i receive not only that but if you've emailed me please only email me once my email is truthunveiled77 at gmail.com so if you have emailed me to this email I have received it at this email address but please only email me once I'm going to repeat that please only email me once do not copy and paste your email a couple of days later and email me once again do not forward me your email a couple of days or even a week or two later because when I go through your email and see it more than once, then I start to wonder if I responded to it or not. Just it's better for everyone if you only email me once. Also, I'm going to say this too. If you've emailed me regarding a specific scriptural question, what I recommend you do is that you please take a look at the channel because more than likely, 90% of your questions might have already been answered on previous videos or previous uh, places on the channel and older videos that you might not have seen. If you're wondering how you can take a look at those videos, well, you could do so right here by going to the channel homepage and then by going to playlists if you click on playlists you'll be able to see it more than likely your question has already been answered in the scriptures often ignore playlist and the living righteously playlist so if you're looking for scriptures when it comes to healing or health if you want to know more about the sabbath and things like that how to observe it or you have questions about the calendar you can find those answers in these playlists right here or even the torah truth playlist or even the be deceived no more playlist once again you can find those answers there because I'm pretty sure unless you have seen all 700 plus videos your answer to your question is somewhere within these videos or even better yet you can pray about it to Yahuwah in the name of Yahusha and get an answer that way but now we're going to go over more of the content and address this so we can have clarity so that the truth will be revealed to you today now we've gone over these five preliminary verses and we've talked about this in previous videos but now once again we're going to talk about it once again one more time and not only that we're going to also answer some preliminary questions was he in fact nailed to a cross no he was not nailed to a cross what about being hung on a tree well we're going to find out in scripture but then the common question I get was was the Messiah Yahusha was he in fact pierced the answer to that question is yes he in fact was but then some people are wondering well how was he pierced if he was hung on a tree well now we're going to go over that because here we are in Ma'asha Acts chapter 5 verse 30 that says the Alua of our fathers raised up Yahusha whom ye slew and hanged on a tree and also Ma'asha Acts chapter 10 verse 39 which says, and we are witnesses of all things which he did both in the land of the Yaudium and in Yerushalam, whom they slew and hanged on a tree. So once again, we see the word tree here. And if you go to your KJV, it will also say what? Tree. And I know your Christian church and your Christian pastor has taught you about the cross and has spoon-fed you that for how many years now? Because some people try to say, oh, well, the Messiah being hung on a tree is not scriptural, is not biblical. Well, that is not true because here we are giving you at least four different scriptures that prove that he was, in fact, hung on a tree. And once again, who are the only group of people you know in history who have been hung on trees? I will let you figure that out. But while you 
you do, we'll be taking a look at Ma'asha, Acts chapter 13, verse 29, that says, And when they had fulfilled all that was written of him, they took him down from the tree and laid him in a sepulcher. So where did they take him down from? From the tree. It does not say cross. It says tree. And then also 1 Peter 2 verse 24 that says here, Who his own self bear our transgressions in his own body on the tree that we being dead to transgression should have kaya or life unto righteousness by whose stripes ye were healed and this should say peter right here but first peter 2 24 what because it says by his stripes ye were healed well we are familiar with this passage well but do we focus on the part right here that says what tree it does not say cross it says tree right there now we've gone over this verse when it comes to our Paul video. If you have not seen it, please take a look at it in the description box below. But you even see right here in Galatium or Galatians chapter 3 verses 13 through 14. And right now we're just in verse 13 that says, Mashiach hath redeemed us from the curse of the law, being made a curse for us. Now we've gone over this passage right here and how important it really is and significant and what your translators tried to do and how much has been twisted, how much has been added and taken out of scripture which they were not supposed to do and also the truth concerning Paul altogether but then it goes on to say for it is written cursed is everyone that hangeth on a tree then we've also gone over this passage here which is in the Thura or Torah itself the first five books of scripture commonly known as Genesis Exodus Leviticus Numbers and Deuteronomy because here we are in Debarium or Deuteronomy chapter 21 verses 22 through 23 that says and when a man has committed a transgression worthy of death, then he shall be put to death, and you shall what? Hang him on a tree. Let his body not remain overnight on the tree, for you shall certainly bury him the same day. So again, we see no mention of a cross whatsoever here. Nor do we see any mention of a cross in the so-called Old Testament, but we're going to be talking more about that in the deceptions of the wicked translators. But like this one right here, we're here in Deuteronomy 21, 23, that's commonly seen in most passages today. Again, pardon the pagan words and pagan titles. But once again, the reason why we're here, like we've talked about in our Paul video, is because when you take a look at this, and when you go to the KJV, you'll see right here that what this part right here is in parentheses, the part that where it says for he that is hanged is accursed of all or that what says in Galatians that what being made a curse for us cursed is everyone who hangs on the tree that's quoted right here well the problem with this is that what it's in parentheses the parentheses indicate that it was added by the wicked translators adding and taking away because in our Paul video we also had gone over the importance of the word curse and understanding what a curse is and also looked at Debarium Deuteronomy chapter 27 to understand Understand exactly what a curse is who is cursed and also examples of curses in scripture and who has been cursed according to scripture and we also talked about and showed you how curses relate to what disobedience so the Messiah was not made a curse for us because he was without transgression the only ones in scripture who have been cursed according to the word have been results of disobedience and if you would like to learn more about this topic you can take a look at the paul video for more that covers more about that all right so if we just proven with the so-called new testament that indeed the messiah was in fact hung on a tree and that they took him down from a tree where do we get the word cross from where does the cross come from because then some people are saying all right but then the new testament so-called also says cross in the kjv in places in common places such as mathathiau matthew 16 24 where it says take up his cross but did it originally say that because when we go to the greek and here we are in Strong's Concordance, the Greek 4716, which is the Greek word staros. You see right here that the definition is an upright stake. So the original word should be stake and not cross. So it should say take up his stake. Well, then the question becomes, well, what is a stake according to scripture? And what is the scriptural definition and understanding of a stake? Because that's where we're going to get some clarity from this, because again, we 
cannot approach this from a westernized, Hellenized, Grecian, European, Eurocentric mind. We have to approach this from a Yaudiath, Hebraic mind and seek the ancient path because again nothing new is under the sun and just like we've proven in Debarium Deuteronomy chapter 21 that what they were doing what they were hanging people on trees back then so again nothing new under the sun but if you keep reading further you'll see right here the word staros it says here they call it a cross piece but that's what they added and you're going to find out why the wicked translators did all this adding and taking away why they took out the original definition of an upright stake and then added the cross because of what idolatry but anyway it says what the cross beam or what patabellum and that's what we're going to be focusing on that word patabellum it's placed at the vertical member to form a capital T this transverse beam was the one carried by the criminal so what was this beam where did it actually come from is a better question and if you keep going when it comes to definition and word origins if you keep scrolling scrolling down right here we'll go right here it says upright stake so even according back then to certain words and etymologies we see that it is in fact a stake but then interestingly enough when you go to the word tree so all of those passages in the so-called new testament from acts 5 30 and acts 10 39 where you see the word tree you get this greek word which is g 3586 or zulon which is this one notice how it says wood and the usage right here is anything made of wood a piece of wood the trunk of a tree used to support what they call the crossbar in crucifixion and we know that it was a stake so once again this was a stake and that what anything made of wood so was the stake made of wood from the tree or the tree all right, so if we know that in fact he was indeed hung on a tree according to scripture, well then how was he pierced then? Well now we're going to get into that, but first we're going to take a look at some scriptural references that talk more about piercing. And we're going to look at three different Yaudiath Hebrew words that talk about pierce or to pierce. The first one is going to be this one, which is kara, which means pierced, and we find it in this passage. In Tholium or Psalms chapter 22 verses 14 through 18 where it says here, I have been poured out like water and all my bones have been spread apart. My heart has become like wax. It is melted in the midst of my inward parts. And by the way, this passage is talking about the Mashiach. It's talking about Yahusha. So for those who are trying to say that, oh, the Messiah is not in the so-called Old Testament or for those who are denying the so-called New Testament, the, the Messiah altogether, I seriously recommend you really take Take a look at this and pay careful attention because this is some very important stuff indeed but then verse 15 says my strength is dried like a pot's herd and my tongue is cleaving to my jaws into the dust of death you are appointing me for dogs have surrounded me a crowd of evil ones have encircled me piercing my hands and my feet does that sound familiar i count all my bones they look they stare at me verse 18 they divide my garments among them and for my raiment they cast lots didn't that happen to yahusha and so the first word that we find this is kara right here in the Strong's Yaudi at the Hebrew, the Strong's H 3738, kara, which means dig or pierce, as you can see right here. Now, when you take a look at this and when you break it down in the Yaudi at Hebrew language, if you would like to learn more about how each letter breaks down and the meaning of each letter, please take a look at our Scriptures Often Ignore videos on Hebrew 101, parts 1 and parts 2 that was done back in 2017. But as you see right here, here you'll see that it has three letters and this letter right here is the cop which means palm of hand this letter is the rush right here which means first or chief and then this letter the hey or the ah which means to behold or window now again in the Yaudi at the ancient language we ignore the vowel pointing that was added by the false Jewish because what they did that to corrupt the language but not anymore so when you put all of this together you get behold the first palm of hand or behold the chief palm of hand well wasn't his hand pierced according to scripture
We also see this word right here in Zechariah 1210, which also what foreshadows the Messiah right here because it has what Dakar, which also means pierced. And we read it right here where it says, And I shall pour on the house of Daud and on the inhabitants of Yerushalam a rook or spirit of favor and prayers. And they shall look on me whom they pierced, and they shall mourn for him as one mourns for his only son. And they shall be in bitterness over him as a bitterness over over the firstborn. Now here's that word right here, Strong's 1856, Dakar in the Yaudiath Hebrew language. As you see, it means to pierce or pierce through. And it has three letters right here. It has the doll or the dalet, and then the cop right there, and then the rosh once again. And if you put it together, you get that it means the chief door behind, because doll means door. And then right here, you have the cop right there, which means behind or sun on horizon. And then this word right here with the rosh, which means the chief or first. So it means the first door behind or the chief door behind. Well, we know that Yahusha is what? He is the door. And he is the door to salvation. So we see how important this definition really is. And then another place we see this word pierced is actually right here in Yahshua Yahu, Isaiah 53 verse 5. And this passage is very common and this verse is commonly quoted. Now, not only that, but this entire chapter, please read this entire chapter of Yashayahu 53 if you already have not, because you will see that this passage is talking about the Messiah, Yahusha himself. No, it is not talking about David. It is talking about the Messiah himself, the same Messiah and the so-called New Testament. The reason it's so-called is because they're really not two different testaments. That's part of the deception of Christianity. No, they're actually actually the same thing. The original words is the original covenant and then the renewed covenant because Yahusha came to do what? Not to do away with the law, but to make what? The renewed covenant. But it says right here that he was pierced for our transgressions. Well, who was pierced? That's talking about Yahusha. He was crushed for our crookednesses. The chastisement for our shalom or peace was upon him and by his stripes we are healed. Here's that word right here, kalal, which means to bore or pierce right here. Now, what's interesting about this word is that it has two lams in it, or lamad, right there, which means staff or to lead, and then the chet, as it's commonly known, or the kat right here, which means wall or separation. So, when you put it together, it can mean that the lead staff separates, and we know that what? He comes to what? Separate the weeds from the tares. Now here are some more foundational verses that talk more about the Messiah and also when it comes to how he actually died and then was buried and of course resurrected. But here we are in Tholium, Psalm chapter 34, verse 20, where it says, he is guarding all his bones. Not one of them is broken. So we know that even though Yahusha was pierced, that none of his bones were broken. We also see this with the Passover account, another witness and precept in Shamauth, Exodus chapter 12, verse 46 where it says it is eating in one house you are not to break any of the flesh outside the house nor are you to break any bone of it well why is this so important because this was on Pesach or Passover well Yahusha what he died on Pesach Passover and he is what our Passover lamb the perfect lamb without blemish without transgression and having the blood of the lamb on the doorpost, why is that so significant? Because it's so significant today of what? Having the blood of the lamb on our doorpost, on our hearts, having the amunah, the belief of Yahusha, that he is our Mashiach, our sovereign and savior, and that he's the begotten son of all, that he came as all in the flesh in order to die for our iniquities and transgressions, and that he died, was buried, and was resurrected. We also have Yaukanan, John chapter 19, verses 32 through 37, as another witness that fulfilled it, because it says, Therefore the soldiers came and broke the legs of the first and of the other who was impaled with him. So yes, indeed, Yahusha was impaled on the stake, and we'll talk more about that. Verse 33 says, But when they came to Yahusha and saw that he was already dead, they did not break his legs, but one of the soldiers pierced his side with the 
spear and instantly blood and water came out. But the question is, where did they pierce him? Did they pierce him on the cross or was he pierced on the stake on the tree? Because verse 35 says, and he who has seen has witnessed. So what? There are witnesses because what? Two or more witnesses to establish every matter and his witness is true. And he knows that he is speaking the truth in order that you might trust or have a moon I believe for this took place in order for scripture to be filled not one of his bones shall be broken and we already read that in the book of Thalium Psalms and again another scripture says they shall look on him whom they pierce and we already read that in Zechariah or Zechariah 12 10 and then we also have Kazun Revelation 1 through 7 that says see he is coming with the clouds and every eye shall see him even they who pierced him and all the tribes of the earth shall mourn because of him. Yes, Amana, which means truly. But not only is this talking about a physical piercing, those who physically pierced him, it's also talking about a spiritual one, those who have not accepted Yahusha as their perfect Passover lamb, those who have denied their Mashiach sovereign and savior. So in summary, they lay Yahusha on the patabellum, which is the Latin word for the stake. And here is where they marked where his wrists were. And then they bored holes, a handspan with the wood auger, which was more than likely a drill back then. And then a few of the soldiers, what they did was they tied a rope just above his elbow and pulled with all their strength. And then the other soldier waited for his wrist to reach the bored hole that had been with attached with the wood auger or the drill and this had been attached to the tree where he would die from now on the front of the tree was the notch into which the patabellum or the stake was securely nailed and roped they then used a chisel and mallet to cut a hole some three fingers deep in the tree on the heel where his right foot was placed, permitting the back of the right leg to lay flat against the tree wherein the spike was driven into the left foot. Yahusha was therefore nailed to the tree via the stake or patabellum and was nailed through the wrist between the bones. And of course, after enduring all of that severe pain and significant pain was then hung on a tree. And then according to the Barium 21, they then took him down from the tree, according to the book and accounts of Acts, of course, getting ready for his burial before the next day on Passover, going into unleavened bread. And then there's also the account where they saw the hands and they saw the piercing in the hands and the feet. And we can see it right here in Yaukanan, John chapter 20, verses 24 through 31 that says, But the Uma or Thomas called the twin, and by the way, the Yaudith word for this name actually means twin. One of the twelve was not with them when Yahusha came. So the other taught one said to him, We have seen the sovereign, but he said to them, Unless I see in his hands the mark of the nails, mark sign covenant, and put my finger into the imprint of the nails, and put my hand into his side, I shall by no means have a munar or belief. And after eight days his taught ones were again inside, and Thauma with them. Yahusha came, the doors having been shut, and he stood in the midst and said, Shalom to you. Then he, Yahusha, said to Thauma, bring your finger here and see my hands and bring your hand and put it into my side and do not be unbelieving, but have a muna or belief. And Thauma answered and said to him, my sovereign and my alua. Then Yahusha said to him, Thauma, because you have seen me, you have trusted. Barak or blessed are those who have not seen and have trusted. There were indeed many other signs that Yahusha did in the presence of his taught ones which are not written in this book but these have been written so that you trust that Yahusha is the Mashiach or Messiah the son of Alua and that trusting you might possess Kaya in his name and then also our Ya Luke chapter 24 verse 39 through 40 which says see my hands and my feet that it is I myself handle me and see for a root or spirit does not have flesh and bones as you see I have and saying this he showed them his hands and his feet.
So if we see that indeed he was pierced and nailed on a tree and in fact died on a tree and was hung on a tree, well then where does all of this cross come from? And could it have been a perversion of Rome, Rome pushing certain things? Because notice with the tree, you have what? Something very reminiscent to what? The tree of Kaya, the tree of life. And tree represents Kaya, it represents life. And notice with each branch that each branch extends itself because it's worshiping and praising Yahuwah, it is a living thing. It is living. But with the cross, where do you normally see crosses? You see them where? They represent and are attributed to the dead. You see them in cemeteries. And if you have a cross on your neck or a cross anywhere in your possession, you are crossing out salvation. Is this the mark of the beast or at least one of them? The cross is a form of idolatry and it breaks the second commandment, which is what? No graven images. And we've talked about in previous videos that you can find in the playlist, like the Be Deceived No More playlist, about the pagan origins of the cross and how the cross is rooted in Babylonian origin, Egyptian origin. It's a pagan origin going all the way back to the worship of Tammuz that's found in Yakazakal or Ezekiel 8, verse 12 through 16. The letter T is is the first initial of the sun deity Tammuz's name. It's the worship of what? The son of Nimrod. That's why you see the cross embedded in all these different religions and all these different cultures as we talked about. You see it with the Egyptian cross. So yes, during the time of Egypt, because nothing new is under the sun, in ancient Egypt, they had crosses too, onks plastered all over the place. Just like in Celtic regions, the Latin one, of course, the Maltese one. And as we've gone over in the Islam video and even the Hinduism and Buddhism video, you even see it in ancient Buddhism and and Hinduism religions as well. And even in ancient Egyptian hieroglyphics, as we've also talked about and gone over, there you see right here the cross. Once again, nothing new is under the sun. The cross is a graven image and it breaks the second commandment, which is no graven images. And what, what, what did the Roman Catholic Church, what did the beasts do? They took that commandment out and added in an extra one, adding and taking away. They're not supposed to do that. That's why it's important to know the truth and the origins of these things because remember this, the truth is what will make you free. But it's interesting, again, as we've talked about with the Yaudiya, Hebraic language and understanding, you see that names have meanings, words have meanings. It's not like this paganized English that has really no meaning to the actual word, but the words have meaning. And as we've gone over in previous videos, when we talked about and covered the name of the Father and the Son, we've talked about how each letter in the Yaudiyat has a meaning. Because right here, this is the Yod, this is the He, as it's commonly known as the Ah, and also the U right here which is commonly known as the Vav, and then the A ah again right here. Now this letter right here means hand. It goes from right to left. This is the name right here, Yahua, pronounced Yahua, read from right to left. Again, there's four letters, so this right here means hand. This means behold or window. This means nail. And again, this means behold because they're the same letter. So when you put to all of this together, you get what? Behold the hand, behold the nail. Where did we see that? The Creator Himself coming in the flesh because He was pierced for our transgressions. Do you see this right here? And do you see the importance of this? But prayerfully, this video has been very helpful unto you. Prayerfully, this video has clarified and answered all of your questions on this topic and prayerfully this video grants you the understanding that you need because remember this now that the truth has been revealed to you the truth is what will make you free and if you have any questions comments or concerns or even recommendations on the scriptures and if you would like more understanding or if you just have any questions for me please feel free to email me at truthunveiled77 at gmail.com again my email is just truthunveiled 77 not three at gmail.com 
Also, if you have any questions regarding scriptures and if you would like a recommendation of what scriptures that I use and the scriptures that I recommend, also email me at truthunveiled77 at gmail.com and make sure to put scriptures in the title of the email. If you have any questions about anything else, please be sure to email me. Prayerfully, this lesson was very helpful unto you. This is Truth Unveiled here saying Shalom.